Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, something I find very interesting is religions and even cults across history. And some of them can be quite strange indeed. And it looks like in this video, they're going to be downright terrifying. So Good Enough put out a video, and this thing went viral. Nine days it's been out. has 1.7 million views to it. So it looks like you guys are eating it up too. So I want to see what it's all about. And hopefully I can add some history to it. All right, this video will be linked down below. So make sure you check out the original. Make sure you support that. And let's get started. All right. It's like we're doing that scale again, the nightmarish ones too. Eh, just let's strange. start with the strange and slowly work on the see how far back in history they go here. ones on the list. Number seven, the Russian doomsday cult. The Russian doomsday so cult doomsday would make cults. international news in November of 2007, when around 35 of their members barricaded themselves inside of a small cave in Russia's Penza region. And when authorities went down to investigate and remove them from the dead, cave, right? the cult members would respond oh, no. by threatening to blow themselves up. With some of the members <laughs> even bringing their children inside of the cave, police were left with no option but to wait them out. But before I tell you how this all ends, let's first cover the origins yeah, of this mysterious group and how they got to that point. What's their faith? The cave dwellers were originally part of Tenants. the Russian Orthodox Church, He's but they would end up leaving the church when a self-proclaimed prophet named Pyotr Kuznetsov convinced them that the world would soon be coming to an end. Pyotr would refer to his new follower. Hey, I wanted to interject and in this, this whole like doomsday thing and that there's a group that thinks an end is coming. This goes back ancient times, even for like Christians and Jews who would always kind of say it was oftentimes they would say like the end is near, the end is near, the end is near. Now, certain groups have taken that a little more seriously and like changed their whole lives to prepare for it. But this is something that's been around probably since religion has been around. It's for real, like an, an inevitable, immediate and, and forthcoming doomsday as the chosen ones. Which made them feel special. It's one way to get Yoder people to join, right? His followers from eating processed foods, watching TV, or handling money. Mm. <laughs> Usually, cults you have to give up. They money, would right? also reject barcodes, national identification numbers, and passports, okay. since Piotr convinced them that There's they like all contain the mark of the beast. Ah. But after some time had gone by, his followers began to ask questions. Hey, Piotr. Yeah? You know how you've been talking a whole lot about the end of the world and all? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, me and the Who's others been guy? wondering, well, when, when exactly is it? Well... They never, I um, mean, some of them have definitive dates. What you mean? Hmm... <laughs> May, May two, May two thousand and eight. Yeah, May May two thousand and eight. <laughs> Coming up, which was <laughs> so. One of the interesting things about those doomsday cults, you know, is the ones that like pick a day. One thing that's always interesting is to look back at them and then when it comes and goes, you know, what the excuse is. Sometimes there's an excuse like, oh, it happened, but it just happened in this other indiscernible way or, oh, I got the math wrong or something like that. That's always something to, interesting to look at is, you know, what's what's the excuse if it doesn't happen, you know, six months away. The group was then instructed to enter a small cave and patiently wait for the world to come to an end. The cult members entered the cave in November 2007, but conveniently enough, Pyotr would not be joining them. Instead, he had convinced his followers that since the world was ending, they would no longer need their personal possessions. With authorities speculating that he was busy selling off his followers' belongings, he was quickly arrested and taken into custody. It was a scam. If only he could have predicted Often his arrest. Are. Okay, uh, I'll see myself out. <laughs> the cult members would oddly enough still remain inside of the cave, and five months would go by with no one entering or leaving. But on March 28th, 2008, seven women finally had enough, exiting the cave and immediately seeking medical attention. Yeah. A few days later, a portion of the cave would end so up. So they were collapsed. already from November, so you know, 11th month to like March, and for like four months, leading more members to rage quit and exiting the cave. With some members still refusing to leave, the police would have the brilliant idea of look bringing like? Pyotr down to the cave, where he would instruct his followers to exit. But they, they refused. Told him to 
And on May 16, What? 2008, the last nine members of the cult would finally emerge from the cave due to the toxic fumes produced by two of the members who had died over the winter. Oh. With authorities expecting their exit, they Germs. greeted them with a cow. <laughs> nice since cow. they refused to drink milk that contained a barcode. What? As for oh. Piotr, <laughs> authorities would discover that the man actually slept inside of a coffin, further solidifying the fact that he was completely insane where he would end up inside of a psych ward. Number six, Aum Shinrikyu. Probably one of the most infamous and dangerous cults to have ever existed. In 1987, this cult would make themselves known to the world when a few of their members orchestrated the deadliest domestic attack in Japan's history, yeah. leaving 13 innocent people This dead and over 6,000 injured. But before we get to that heinous attack, let's first cover how this cult began. The year is 1987. A man named Chizuo Matsumoto began to distribute pamphlets, claiming to have reached a new level of enlightenment through meditation. The pamphlet advertised a yoga class where you can come and learn about his amazing <laughs> discovery. But It starts with yoga, you guys. Yoga is just a gateway to a cult. Get out of that class. All right. During these classes, he would spend his time preaching about the end of the world. And that should have probably been your cue to updog your way out the class. <laughs> What's that? Nothing much, man. What's up with you? Ah, I don't get it. Because there's downward dog. I've been told. I've never done And yoga. over the course of a few years, he managed to garner dozens of loyal followers, naming the group Om Shinrikyu, which roughly translates to the Supreme Truth. And in 1992, Chizuo Matsumoto would gain even more followers when he released the book titled Declaring Myself the Christ. Which so, okay, because I was, I, was, I was trying to remember the tenets of this. So what you notice with these cults, okay, with you know some of these ones, is they already, like the mainstream versions of them, you know, like mainstream Christianity or whatever, like they already have in the tenets an end of or end of days, right? Like a, like a, yeah, an end of days of some kind. So if that's like already built in your theology, it's obviously going to open up to interpretation and people are going to interpret it to mean maybe it's, you know, again, uh, going to happen sooner, you know, than, than it is. And, and so it just leaves open interpretation because I was, you know, any, any type of these like afterlife type religions or anything that's going to have, that type of possibility, there's probably bound to be cults when you think about it. Which had a picture of him on the cross as the cover. You're saying like Japanese, peak, what would they have? The cult would grow to over tens culture. of thousands of members that spanned over multiple countries. His followers would even state that if people would just take a moment to listen to their enlightened leader, they too would no. see the light. All charismatic But without guys. warning, on the morning of March 20th, 1995, tragedy would strike. You do notice a lot of them are When men, a total huh? of five chemical weapon attacks took place in the Tokyo subway system, killing 13 innocent people and injuring Remember, around 6,000 the others. Though? The attacks would quickly backfire as the authorities began to arrest everyone involved, including the cult leader. These attacks were meant to initiate the apocalypse. Okay. And yeah. once the world had collapsed, the cult would rise to rule the world in the way that they saw fit. So, yeah, this is not the only one I've heard of an instance historically of a religion that it where or a cult that they're what they're trying to do is speed up judgment day like early like anabaptists um were kind of known for that too uh so yeah it's like they want judgment day to come but it's also prophesied in religions like christianity that the that second coming or whatever end of times is going to come in the wake of a massive amount of violence like there's going to be so much war and violence that only you know jesus himself or something could actually intervene so you try to create that it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy But instead, the attacks led the leader and six high-ranking members directly to death row, where they were held until their execution date, which came on July 6, 2018. Is it a hanging? Number five, Heaven's Gate. Ah, Heaven's Gate see, was an this. American religion movement that began to garner a following happened. in Southern California during the mid-1970s. The group has been characterized as a With UFO religion cult, whatever the hell that means. Yeah. The followers of this cult believed that they could transform themselves into immortal extraterrestrial beings once they rejected their human nature, something that their they would refer to wild. as reaching the next level, which I guess they ultimately did. But more on that later. They played the group a lot of was started by bubble Marshall bubble. Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles, who after right. confiding in each other would come to the conclusion that they were the two witnesses described in the book of Revelation. So yeah, so these people that like insert themselves into theologies. Look at pictures of him 
and he just looks crazy when he talks like very captivating and like alarming for a certain probably uh, you know an audience but um they did a bunch of videos a lot of them i think are out there published which would make them profits <coughs> they would fully make convinced they would attend church groups where they would present themselves as the two and i can only assume how funny that must it's have narcissism been. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, um, this is my body. Excuse me? Eyeball. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to let you guys know that, well, we are the two. Okay. What does that mean? You're... Like, the two. There's only two of um, the two. I'm not following. One of the two. You know, like, oh. what two? The two from the book of Revelations? Look it in their books. Uh, well, right. Get a load of this guy. <laughs> yeah, they. But somehow, I'm right. They were. I think they were members of a whole bunch of different groups. If I remember, like before this had kind of moved around, and you know, obviously them having that kind of theology isn't going to fit with any mainstream thing. So what do you do? You make up your own, right? The two would begin to garner a following when they began to hand out flyers advertising their seminars, like this one. Claiming to be from the next level, the leaving the their higher being comment. self to come down to earth to help others. And somehow they managed to recruit around 39 loyal followers. Now, one of the strangest and most terrifying thing about this cult was the fact that all male members were required to be castrated. Right. Which we can all agree is a wild thing to just throw out. Become a eunuch removing your genitalia. Right. That used to be, um, by the way, historically a, a sign of prestige in some cultures, like in Chinese culture. Um, a lot of high officials were were eunuchs. They called them eunuchs and eunuchs were supposed to be trusted amongst leaders because, you know, they don't since eunuchs can't produce children. They don't believe that they can get taken over and somebody want to replace a family dynasty with their own family dynasty. So it was seen as like a somebody you could really trust. My favorite eunuch, Zheng He, the great navigator. He was a eunuch. Look into that. The group would first try to do the procedure in-house, oh, no. almost killing one of their members. So all future Snippet castrations would take it. place at the local hospital. The group would be left in complete shock when one of the two founding leaders, Bonnie Nettles, would suddenly pass away. This would cause the entire cult's belief system to collapse, since they originally preached that all members were to ascend alive inside of a UFO. So Applewhite made a few adjustments the to their post. beliefs and would come to the conclusion that only the person's soul would be taken by the spaceship. 12 years would go by, and the Moving members of the Heaven's post, Gate we call grew tired of waiting. And on March 26, 1997, the San Diego's County Sheriff's Department would discover a horrifying scene. Inside of a rented mansion lay 39 lifeless bodies, including the cult's leader, bringing Applewhite's revelations to fruition. That's, and I guess, in a way where you find it, like, like you saw the first guy, the first cult, the guy um, was like obviously getting money, but like this guy went down with the ship. Now, am I wrong about this one? Am I mixing this up with another cult? There was a this comet that was it back in the 90s. Um, you could see it every night for like weeks. Okay. And I don't, maybe it wasn't them, but I thought it, maybe it's another cult. Maybe they get to them later. But like there was this comet you could see every night. And I thought it was this cult that believed that like behind, like, like flying behind that comet was that spaceship that was going to pick up their souls. I guess the souls, that was going to be your body. So they had to die. And that, that's what that comet was. It was, it was you know, hiding or whatever, the, the spaceship. So they used that as their, you know, excuse. Am I thinking about the wrong one? Because I thought it was Heaven's Gate. And in his own words, the members of Heaven's Gate had finally graduated. Number four. Were they the ones, too, that were also, like, they were wearing, like, Nike jump suits and Nike, like, shoes? Like, they were all dressed the same and, like, nice Nike stuff. 
the Branch Never. Davidians. This okay. is one of the most insane cults to have ever existed. The Branch Davidians were an me. apocalyptic Christian cult founded in Texas in 1935 by the a man named Victor Howtev. And in 1957, the cult would purchase 941 acres of land near Elk, Texas, where they would build a large community that would serve as their home and headquarters. But things wouldn't really start to heat up until 1987. Is this when the Waco? A man named David Koresh would take oh, it over is. as Waco. leader. Okay. And he was, of course, you guessed it, a self-proclaimed prophet. This one was According nuts. to David, he was appointed by God as a prophet with the task of bringing the day of judgment. But David's downfall would start when he began to illegally collect and stockpile dozens of guns and thousands of rounds of ammunition. So they built that as like a compound. Uh, they wanted to like remove themselves a lot from society. I don't know if it's like going to be sovereigns or whatever. I, I watched the whole documentary on this, but anyway, I, th this Since gets he was preparing but, yeah, for the upcoming context. apocalypse. And on February 28th, 1993, federal agents would arrive at the cult's doorsteps with a search and arrest warrant in hand. But the Davidians... I think they, I think there was the warrant or whatever. Wasn't there um, some alleged like abuse, some law breaking, whatever? Like they weren't coming in to like lay siege to the place you know what i mean they just had like a warrant but members had no intentions of allowing them inside or arresting their leader and within moments gunshots began to go off in the gunfire Big four shootout. federal agents and six davidians would end up losing their lives but this was just the beginning the cult members would go on to barricade themselves inside of their compound for 51 there. days but eventually, the FBI was given the green light to enter, firing multiple tear gas canisters inside, and shortly after, the entire building would erupt in flames. And to this day, no one really knows who started the fire, but after it was lit, the standoff would end within the hour, with 76 Davidians and their leader perishing in the fire or by smoke inhalation. And for the high-ranking cult members who managed to escape with their lives, they would end up inside of a cell. Number three. So they were so like scared or whatever I, I gotta go back to watch that it was a really good documentary like within only a year or so that um that's what they're afraid like they they they, they like thought that those the agents they were like brainwashed into thinking they were just trying to like eradicate them right so they 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 fight to the death for david koresh who was the guy leading it who was you know easily could have put down the situation if he just gave himself up or whatever but like meat shields basically and men women and children there and like they said was it 70 people ended up dying in that but yeah they had some kind of weird theology where like the government was coming after them they were so paranoid and then put up a fight and you don't know, win against you know the fbi and order of the yeah. solar temple this okay. apocalyptic cult would make national headlines on October 4th, 1994, when two fires would break out in Switzerland, one at a farm and the other in a chalet. When the paramedics arrived at the scene, they would discover a total of 48 burned bodies across both locations. They had all been wearing white cloaks, but strangely enough, some of them also had a plastic bag over their heads. They were all laid out flat on the ground and um, in a circle. The what Heaven's Gate people, I think they did too, because they like poisoned themselves and they were in like bunk beds and they covered their faces if i remember right one of the sites was even surrounded by mirrors and the cult symbols on arrival officers would also discover that the fires had been ignited with the remote controlled device and since this was the early 1990s they were clearly showing off but these fires wouldn't be an isolated incident in fact this was just the beginning. Oh, one year later, on December 15th, 1995 in France, 16 burned bodies would be discovered, laying in the formation of a star. Then two years later, on March 22nd, 1997, five more members would be discovered in Canada. They were yet again set ablaze by a remote controlled device. Now, here's the terrifying well, part. Have Remember those plastic bags? Well, apparently Asphyxiated? multiple cult members refused to drink the poison on the night of the sacrifice, where they were then held down against their will oh, and had plastic bags murdered. placed over their heads. This was not a choice. So it was like they probably thought that everybody had to be involved for this ritual to like work. And obviously some people, they got cold feet and oh my God, even everyone man. had to participate. <laughs> 
The reason why these cult members took part in these rituals was because they believed that the end of the world was near, and by leaving Earth, their souls would ascend to another planet, inevitably escaping the apocalypse. Number two, movement for the restoration. I don't know. Are you noticing any like connections between these? About, I mean, they're all like they all seem like doomsday things, you know, and in their own interpretation of this stuff. But anyway, the the conspiracies, cults, and stuff like. I'm I'm often fascinated by this stuff from the psychological perspective of looking at like like a psychologist I guess would like the things that draw people to this type of behavior the leaders and and the shared narcissism like from a psychological perspective that's where I find this stuff to be interesting historically Chen of the 10 commandments Okay what's this group called Psst. Number 2 movement for the restoration of the 10 commandments of God could they not have thought of a shorter name? Another group that wants to just... Now, this will probably be one of the most tragic endings day. to a cult that you will ever hear. But before I tell you how this all ends, let's first cover the cult's rise and beliefs. This was a religious movement that took place in Uganda from 1989 through the early 2000s. The group would claim to be a religious movement, garnering around 5,000 members at its peak. However, the rest of the world would categorize this group as a doomsday cult. The cult's beliefs were very simple. Members were strictly to follow the Ten Commandments. They thought that by doing so, they would escape the coming apocalypse. They actually feared breaking the commandments so much that a lot of the members outright refused to speak and would instead communicate using sign language. What? Wait, so you can't do or say bad things in sign language? Is that like how literally they're taking? They couldn't like curse or take God's name in vain with sign language or cheat, steal, whatever. Adapting the classic winning strategy of you can't lose if you don't play, which is a strategy that I have been using for years. Making that, that makes me interested because it's like, do you think if you believe in this stuff, do you think God or whatever is like, like an idiot that like he's like uh, there's loopholes and stuff like that? You're trying to get around the what I guess would be the the point of it, like the point of the laws, a point to these, right? Like. Like, take it for a fool. <laughs> take it in your, your God for a fool. My friends, absolutely jealous. Since they say stuff to me like, you literally don't even leave the house. You don't do anything anymore. And what happened to you? But don't worry. Those are just words. It's so much better to know that you remain undefeated. The leaders of the cult would even claim to be they able do? to directly talk to God and being oh. told when the world would come to an end, placing when? the date on December 31st, 1999. As soon as this date was announced, the cult members erupted in a frenzy, selling their livestock and all of their belongings for very cheap. The this, okay, so I see why this got buried. So if you're if you're older or whatever, and you were of a cognizant age, at the end of 99, there was this whole, I don't know, people, younger people even know about this, this Y2K thing, they called that. And they, the big, the big idea was that when the year 2000 hit, computers would like malfunction. There was this theory that like pro computers were programmed, um, that like the, the years, which they use as like double digits, like when it turns over from, you know, one, nine, 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 it would, it, it didn't know how to like turn into the next year. Like it wasn't programmed to be able to handle another digit, you know? And, and because of that, for some stupid reason, like computing devices would just fail to exist. Computers are going to like fail, but then like important computer programmed things like planes are going to be falling out of the sky and like, the security devices for nukes or something are going to be failed. And then like weapons are going to be going off. And like, it was just like going to be crazy. Now it was a very fringe group that I think actually thought that because no normal people thought that, but it was an interesting thing that there were like doomsdayers. And that's just like the people that were into the Y2K computer stuff. But there were anytime that's like, you know, people are always looking for dates for this stuff, right? Like end of times and something like a new millennium hitting, like that was a big deal. So you have this group, but there were a lot of others of people that just, and a lot of them were, it was more religious. It was like, you know, this is the new millennium and God said at the millennium or whatever, there'd be a cataclysm. You know what I mean? There were a bunch of weird things that happened. And then of course, like nothing happened. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> nothing happened. It was, 
actually a great like New Year's Eve. It was the new millennium. It was party like it's 1999. The leaders would then instruct their members to give all of the money to the movement, which they gladly did. Yes. But eventually, the, ones where the they want date money of from Doomsday you arrived, and surprise, suspect. nothing happened, yeah. causing the leaders to push the date back to March 17th, um, 2000. Yeah, With the followers the enraged and beginning to ask for their money back, the leaders could not afford to be wrong this time around. So on March 17th, 2000, all 530 members were instructed to attend a party inside Ooh. of a boarded up church. But just moments after the last person arrived, the party would quickly come to an end. With the only entrance to the church being shut, the building quickly erupted in flames. With no way out, all 530 members would be trapped inside and slowly burned alive. This not Police would later news? discover that two of the five cult leaders never attended the party. And just four days after the church fire, they police would investigate all of the cult's properties, discovering an additional 395 bodies. What? The bodies of members that had been poisoned just days before the party, raising the total body count to over 900. The two cult leaders that are believed to have orchestrated these attacks managed to escape the country before being captured. And to this day, they remain free. No. Number one. The no. <laughs> they pulled it off. So they probably took a fortune, right? Killed 900 people. Killed the witnesses. And they're on the loose. This wasn't that long ago. It was, what, 20 years ago, whatever? Oh my gosh, that is crazy. We need like an amber alert going out. People's temple. Okay, all right. So this is number one. Like these last two were, I mean, they've all been crazy, but like this next one's going to top that. Okay, let's go. What would become one of the most talked about tragedies in all of American history. With countless of documentaries made on the subject and word of a new movie currently in the works, it really goes to show just how much of an impact this cult has had on society. It would all begin in 1954 in Indianapolis, Indiana, when a communist man named Jim Jones opened up all his Jim own Jones. church, attracting people by offering communist. healing services, claiming to heal all sorts of diseases. Okay, in the coming Town years, massacre. Jones would garner thousands of loyal followers, secretly using religion to further his political ideology. After a while, Jones would begin to get criticized for his views, leading him to move to California in 1965. <laughs> and a little bit of commie What'd they say, 54? Bad time to be a communist in the United States. This is red scare stuff. Someone with a public perception like this, this is, this is like a dude that would be nabbed by the FBI in this era. Um, and held without, you know, <laughs> uh, trials and stuff like that. Just being a communist at this time was something that uh, put you on a watch list and might find yourself in a <laughs> windowless van blindfolded somewhere, you know. So this was a, this is a bad time to be talking about communism. Criticized for his views, leading him to move to California in 1965. And by the early 1970s... So even, even <laughs> You're more you're more likely to believe in, <laughs> you're more likely to believe in a cult than communism in the 1950s America. <laughs> He had established the temple's headquarters in San Francisco. Old members would be tasked with recruiting, leading to massive growth, and eventually they would reach thousands of members. Hey. Yeah. What's up? Do you like Jesus? What? <laughs> like our Lord and Savior Jesus? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess. He's cool. He's like the weird kid from... Cool. The Want to kid. like him with us? Kids from South Park. I'm um, okay, man. Thanks. Why? I'm okay, brother. Appreciate the offer, though. Why? <laughs> uh, just, just keep it moving, man. You know man. a person like this? Why? He told brother, you. try someone else. Why? All right, man, you're ridiculous. Just give me the flyer. They're very pushy. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, I, I can't do this. But the next step would come in 1974 when Jones would acquire close to 4,000 acres of face. remote land in Guyana in South America, a place he would call Jonestown, slowly sending over members as they would begin to build homes and inhabiting the land. He convinced his followers to move by selling them the vision of paradise, a place where they can live freely without the government yeah. getting involved. This reminds me of one of my favorite Simpsons episodes. Remember that one? The 
Unitarians or whatever and the Simpsons and like the whole town joined the cult. That's such a good episode. For Jones, the creating leader is a good, the leader is great. society had always been his goal and it was finally taken Ah, shape. he's making, okay, but, communism, right? Goal of communism is to achieve three things. A uh, uh, a money moneyless, classless, stateless society. There you in go. In 1977, around 900 members lived on the compound, and this would also be the same year that Jones would permanently join them. But the moment he arrived, things quickly changed. Everyone was expected to work eight-hour days, followed by classes at night, where they would learn Stole. about socialism. <laughs> Jones Stole. had effectively begun to brainwash his followers, even taking on the name Father. But everything would change That's on November cult, 17th, right? 1978, when a politician named Leo Ryan and his team arrived at Jonestown to investigate claims of abuse. After the investigation was complete, Ryan would be ambushed at the airstrip, where he and three others would be fatally gunned down. Jones, knowing that the end was near, had a few helpers prepare a giant tub of grape-flavored drink, adding to it a concoction of drugs and cyanide. Not he would then drink. instruct all of his followers to drink a cup. Not knowing what was in it, his followers blindly followed his instructions. And with that cup, they had all but sealed their fate. More than 900 people, including Jones, would end up so dying did, shortly after. His own this incident would create the somewhere. famous saying, don't drink, the Kool don't drink the Kool-Aid, meaning That's to right. not blindly follow a leader or ideology without questioning or critical thinking, or you just might end up like the people at Jonestown. All right, final thoughts. By the way, shout out to the channel Good Enough for their insane immediate success. So looking at, look at this real quick. So this is a, let's see a little bit, their their site or their, their channel. Okay, this channel is four months old. Their first video was four months and got 3.6 million views. They have seven videos, each with at least 1.7 million views. Okay, with 1.7 in the first nine days. Over half a million subscribers. That's insane to see that type of success. The algorithm just loves this. But then that that helps promote your first videos. But you have to have those good videos. Algorithm's gonna algorithm's gonna gonna help you out like once, right? It's gonna give every YouTuber pretty much like you got a shot. They're gonna throw your video out there, and obviously, then it's about retention, right? And amazing that they've had that retention. Um, you know, going with the um, the Salmonella kind of vibe and bringing in those interesting stories because these all seem like topics, you know, that like Sam would do. So, I'm um, seeing a lot of channels that are kind of following in that vein, and obviously, people eat it up and they're interesting. It's just an interesting way to do this. So, anyway, back to the video though. So, yeah, I'm always been interested in religious history and cult history, conspiracies, just for the like I was telling you, the psychological aspect of them. And you can go, again, way deeper in history and see some of these cults. A lot of them have kind of been forgotten in history, but they're pretty much as old in, as religion itself and just go into um, extreme lengths. And, you know, cult is also a term that I think is thrown around a lot and oftentimes, like, overused. Um, I'm trying to remember the the guy who kind of um, – I've heard this before where there's like a like a checklist or whatever of things that have to qualify for a quote or a cult. I forget what that is, but if you look it up, you'll see what I see or it's know what I mean. And it's kind of like being more upon, agreed upon that you got to fulfill these things um, and all these cults, you know, they do that. So anyway, it's not going to be the end, obviously, of cults and some of these bizarre beliefs, but we just hope that, you know, they don't lead to the violence and you feel bad for the people, if even if they're just, you know self-inflicting and not hurting anybody else but you know scary stuff out there right all right anyways uh thanks for being with me and we'll see y'all next time